Good morning, Michelle Saxman here, and ready to share with you some time with Jesus Calling by Sarah Young on December the 20th. Uh, you guys, it's not in our doing. It is all about our being and our ability to be this peace, his peace that is within us. So cultivating this level of peace, nurturing the fruits of the spirit, acknowledging when I joined the ranks of humanity, when word became flesh in a newborn in a stable, you guys, into the ordinary came an extraordinary. He did not come into the religious order. He did not come through the Sanhedrin. He did not come through the Pharisees. He was not born unto the kings and the governors and the rulers of the people and the earth. Instead, he came in the most humblest form. Few people knew his glory shone out. Uh, only up until the miracles, it only happened a couple of times. One I can think of is when he was quite young and the family was on the trip into the temple and he got separated from his family and he knew all of these verses of the Torah, yet he had not formally been taught through the church at that time. So he, he was a teacher, even though he was very young and people wondered where would he get this, except that he was the Father, the Son, the Creator, all in one. Um, I could have called down the legions. You guys, this is a God of incredible restraint. And there are times when I think we want to go like, God, just jump in here and fix this. But instead, this is a journey of self-awareness and answering that question, where am I? God called out to Adam and Eve and said, where are you? Not because he didn't know where they were, but because we are called out to know where we are in relation to him and then do what is necessary on our part to pull ourselves back into right relationship. Toward the end of my life, I was taunted and tempted to display more of my awesome power than my father's plan permitted. You guys, our heavenly father has a plan for us as well. When we continue to focus on his word, his direction, and his time. So the readings for today, the first one is John chapter 2 verse 11. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. Uh, this was at a wedding when the, his first miracle was turning the water into wine. And what I did, I did a little bit of research on this, and that is it was a seven-day wedding celebration. And there was a lot of shame brought on to the father of the bride if they ran out of any food, wine, any of the entertainment. And so Jesus comes in the ordinary. He is a guest at the ceremony. And he was kind of ridiculed a bit for, they were like, oh yeah, we'll put water in these things. But you guys, it was the moment, they didn't turn to wine actually in the jars and in the caress. It was when the jar touched the wine glass that it poured from water into wine and became visible to all, which is really different than what I thought. I thought it was turned to wine, kind of in the vessels, off in the storage. But imagine now you're in complete and utter awe. So you think that the servant is coming to pour you water, and in that moment, it turns to wine. So his glory shone in moments according to God's plan as they, they were permitted at that time. The next reading is Luke chapter 23, verses 35 and 36. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar. Jesus is already crucified and hanging on the cross. He is already beginning to take on all of the sins of the world. And in this moment, they're saying, call on him, let him, you know, if, if you are who you say you are, come down, take yourself off of this cross. But you guys, it is because he remained on that cross that he takes on all of the sins of the world so that we can be forgiven. And very, very importantly is that it provides the right relationship with me. That is the reason for all of this, the reason for the season. God knew we would miss the mark. He knew from the moment that Adam and Eve, the fall of mankind, that in our core, in our human form, we would need a savior. And his plan all along was to send his son. And now we are called to be in right relationship with that savior to bring that peace back into this world. The final reading is Psalm chapter 92 verses 
verses 1 through 5. Um, I will tell you this psalm is written by David and it is referred to as the song of the Sabbath, calling us to rest and wisdom. It, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody for the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. Because this is this was proclaimed out. Sabbath not just being a day of the week, I will say. Sabbath is a time for us to rest and be restored by his wisdom and his peace. It is good to praise him and make music. Almost hug. To proclaim your love in the morning. This, I think, is really important. Proclaim your love in the morning. Set the intention to bring him in. And at the end of the day, reflect on his faithfulness. That is a really important recipe for each and every one of us. Set our intention toward glory and praise in the morning, inviting him into all activity of our day to sit back at the end of the day with a reflection of his faithfulness and reminding ourselves of the time that he showed up for us. So this is the 20th of December, just a few more days. We are still in the Advent season, preparing our hearts and our homes for the presence of his peace. So y'all have a super blessed day. Stay connected to the vine and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.